What's good, everybody? This is Ryan Johnson with MoneyBass.com. All right, guys, back with another one. This is another episode of How Would You Fish It? So for you guys that are new subscribers, new viewers, what we do every week is we get together. I will pull up a video clip, um, let that video clip play out. And this is actual footage from whenever I have been out on the water. I found some type of structure, cover, fish or something like that. And what we do is watch that video clip. I will go ahead and pause it for maybe a quick second, give you guys a chance to go ahead and put your comments down in the comment section of what it is that you're noticing on the screen. Um, like I said, what type of structure, what type of cover, if you're seeing fish on the screen and from there. Um, and also take a look at water temps, guys. Sometimes that plays a, a factor into how you would uh, go about fishing this particular um, video clip. And from there, what type of lures would you use and why? So this is just something that we do to get together, give guys um, kind of a, a different viewpoint of ways that you can go about catching fish that you are seeing whenever, whenever you are out on the lake with your electronics. And on this episode, it's kind of twofold, guys. So um, we're going to be taking a look at some mega live footage. I'm going to mix in some down imaging and also uh, a, some sonar uh, screenshots in here for you. And um, I guess the first thing that I want you guys to take a look at is some of you guys have been asking how far out can you see with your mega live system? Keep in mind, this footage that I'm going to show right now is the 1.130 uh, version of firmware for the mega live system. So this is not even going to be the 1.150, uh, which is actually what would give you a better picture than what you're going to see in this footage. But what you will see is that you still have a very good, clear picture um, and you're able to see what you need to in order to get the job done out on the water. So first off, I want to give a shout out to all of my loyal and long term subscribers. Really appreciate you guys supporting the channel. Make sure you please hit the like button on the way in. It really does help out the channel and share these videos. If you are new to the channel, this is your first time watching it, please consider subscribing to the channel. Make sure you go to www.moneybass.com. That will take you directly to my YouTube channel where it will display my catalog of videos. And there is something in there for everybody. Um, another thing, guys, make sure you take a look in the description area. Always take a look in the description and the comment section. There's good information in there in addition to the information that's in the videos. And consider joining the Patreon. Um, my main goal here is to provide value to everyone and just make sure that we all have successful days out on the water. So value is the name of the game. But let's go ahead and get into it. I'm going to go ahead and play this video, guys. Then we will come back and discuss it. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pull it up. Let's see. All right, now let's go ahead and take a look and see what we have, guys. All right, guys, I'm currently out here sitting in about 49 feet of water and closing in getting a little bit shallower i have the mega live set at 40 feet out and i think that is 110 feet um going forward and basically what i'm going to do is just keep driving forward and scanning ahead um all right guys think about think about what i just said i have it set out at 110 feet and remember this is version 1.130 we have now upgraded to 1.150. I will get out on the water and redo this so you guys can see some footage with the 1.150 um, update. But for now, I just wanted you guys to, to just make note of that, that we're starting out at 110 feet with the previous uh, um, I version. know there's a, a tree or brush pile or something ahead of me. So I have the trolling motor set on about five. And I'm going to see how soon we start seeing those brush piles all right so let me stop right there look out at the 100 foot mark and down at about 25 feet you can see a a little dot on there so if you are familiar with how to read your units then you kind of get an idea of what you were looking at guys so a lot of this has to do with how well you can inter interpret what you're seeing on the screen so that is one over 100 feet out using your mega live system so just think about that all right so if you're if you're watching and paying attention you will catch things like that all right let's keep on taking a look 
So I'm, there we go. So you're starting to see it right there. Let's see. There we go right there. So that right there, I know that that is a brush pile because I've already scanned over it. And that's something that you guys can do to get acclimated to what you're seeing on the screen. All right. So think about it. Think about it, guys. Now we're sitting at 80 feet. You're starting to get that picture starting to dry out a little bit better. And another thing to keep in mind uh, hold on just a second. Okay, so another thing to keep in mind is, like I said, it is version 1.130. And you're still able to get a, a, a good idea of what you're starting to look at. You can see that that is some type of uh, structure, some type of cover out there on the lake. And also, guys, I have this in perspective mode. So let me pull it back up. So if you look in different areas, you will see that little purple haze in there. For me, I can still decipher what I am seeing on the screen with that perspective mode. So anything that is moving is going to have that little purple haze kind of following behind it. And that gives you an indication of what direction it is moving on the screen. All right. So I'm just going to go ahead and keep following um, through on this. But I think this is a real good one, guys. Something that you if you really pay attention to these details, something that you can really gain value and learn something from. And that's something you guys can do to get used to seeing stuff on the screen and knowing what it is that you're pulling up on. So let me just get lined back up with it again. So I'm going to go over it right now. It's moving pretty fast. So I'm going to go over it kind of fast first. Then I'm going to turn back around and pull up to the same area and show you guys how this looks once you set up to fish it. So this is how you can use it to locate um, your cover that you plan to fish. And I did see there's some fish sitting right up above it, but let's just keep moving. So we saw that out. Um, how far was that out? It was about a hundred feet or so that we were still able to see it. So right now, of course, I'm moving fast, so it isn't going to show a real good image, but brush pal or tree that we were seeing from about a hundred. All right, let me pause it right here for you guys. All right. So what you're looking at right now on the left side is the sonar. On the right is going to be your down imaging, and that's the mega imaging on the side. You can see it down at the bottom, the 1.1 1 .1, um, megahertz to 1.2 megahertz. All right, so on the right-hand side, it kind of gives you a, a clearer image. And again, this is still not even dialed all the way in, guys, because I could uh, up uh, the sensitivity and contrast and things like that to get the pictures a little clearer. But for this purpose, I know what I'm looking at. So on the right-hand side, that a uh, tree that's standing up on the left. Uh, a lot of times fish will, they will, uh, what's the word that I'm looking for? They'll stage right at the top of those trees. Sometimes they'll be in the middle. And to the right of that, you'll see that there's actually a tree or something that has fallen down. You can see the branches and everything like that. And in some cases, those fish will actually be like just glued to the bottom so that you won't even see those so you got to keep those kind of things in mind whenever you start seeing something like this do you even stop to fish it if you're not seeing a bunch of fish or do you consider like hey sometimes those bigger fish they may be there but they may be down on the bottom where you can't easily see them on the screen but let's go ahead and keep going guys 100 feet away so you can see this area up here where it's a little darker at so that could be more of a concentration of branches or possibly the fish that are uh, that are set up right in the top of that tree. But now you can see more details and definition in there. And let's just go back to use my shortcut key. So that right there, I can tell is the second thing that we saw. All right. So this right here is that same image, but from a, a different view. Once I have gone and turned back around. So now you see the tree is on the right hand side and the one that was laying down is is um, on the left hand side. So this is just to show you um, just to give you an idea of how that would look on your live imaging system. And remember, guys, keep in mind, this is one point one three oh. So the one point one five oh for what from what I have seen now that I'm using that it kind of connects those gaps in there a little bit better. Um, but let's go ahead and keep going. And then we will get into the how would you fish it part, guys. All on the down scan so there's the big tree that we were looking at and there's the one that was laying down and you can see the branches that are coming up so when we saw that on down scan um you can pretty much tell exactly what you're looking at now so once you start fishing more and more and you go over areas where you are able to see things on down scan all right so let's go ahead and stop it right there guys 
So what do you guys think? Leave some comments down there. I'm really interested in seeing um, how you guys are interpreting this. Are you uh, getting an understanding of what you are seeing on the screen? How does this help you? And, um, you know, just just give me some opinions, some of your thoughts on it. So now let's get into how would you fish it? And let me just scroll back through here just a little bit and kind of pull up. Um, let's see. All right, Hold guys, on. I'm One currently second, out here. Sitting. Let me just go ahead and mute it real quick. And I'm just going to scroll to an area where we can see um, a good picture of it. So as we talk about it, we know what we're looking at. All right. And let's just go to the live imaging since that is what we are all about right here. OK, so here we go. All right. So on the left side, well, on the 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 left side of the screen is actually the sonar. So we're not directly on top of it yet. So at this instance, that sonar isn't really helping you. But over on the right hand side, you can see the tree that's standing up and the one that is actually falling down. So on the one to the right, a lot of times those fish will be staged at the top of that um, the top of that tree. And you can just see those dots just right at the top. On the one on the left, sometimes it's the same way. You may see those fish um, mixed in to that cover, and some of those fish will actually be down on the bottom. And that persistence mode is what will help you determine once you're kind of standing still. Um, maybe you're using spot lock. Sometimes there is a way to use spot lock and still be able to use your mega live system. That's another video, guys, that we will get into. Maybe I'll put that in the Patreon for you guys that want to go a little more in depth into things. But um, so now let's just go ahead and talk about it. So for me, sometimes what you have to keep in mind is once you get over these fish now, maybe they're getting used to the to the sonar because I've noticed that I'm not able to catch fish as well using my drop shot as I used to by getting directly over them using the sonar and being able to get those fish to the boat. So now what I do is I take a long distance approach, guys. So coming up on this structure, if I see those fish that are staged at the top of this tree, right now you in this video, you don't really see those fish the way that I have in some other ones. But this is just kind of going over some, some ideas and some things that you can try out. And also, like I said, I want to see what you guys have in mind. So for me, one of the things that I'll do when I'm, say, about 65, 70 feet out from that, and as you saw, you can start seeing that from around 100 feet or so. But once I get into casting distance, what I will do is just pull up something like a, let me just go ahead and pull this up, top water bait. Um, sunny outside, you, got, you guys already know if it's sunny, you want to use something that has kind of like a, um, a flashy color to it. This is chrome. So you can use anything, whatever you feel confident in. And then if it's kind of cloudy, you want to go with your white colors, bone colors. But you just want to toss this out maybe 10, 15 feet past that cover that you're fishing and just work this across the top. And you'll see those fish come across the top and uh, that might get that bite that you need. And guys, that Patreon is going to be is going to be good, guys. We're going to talk about this mega live top water. You see the temperatures are rising. You know that top water bite is coming. <laughs> it's going to be good, guys. It's going to be good. All right. So another thing that I would do once I throw that top water, um, if I'm able to connect with those fish on, on top, then, hey, I, I may keep using that for a while. But if not, then I may need to switch to something that I can get um the, the fish to down to where the fish are at. So I can throw this out there, either count this down if I can't see it. So depending on how well you're able to read your live system and how well you have it dialed in, you may actually be able to see this bait as it's falling down. So you can may not necessarily have to count it down. You can actually watch it get down to the depth that you need. Just get it directly above those fish. In some cases, you can fish this thing. Once you throw it out, you can let it fall on one side of that tree, reel it, and as you're reeling it, you know it comes up, and then you can kind of kill it and let it go back down on the other side of that cover that you're seeing. Real good information, guys. Think about what I'm telling you. You guys can actually use this thing and kind of guide it to wherever you want it to go. So that fish head spin, spy bait, something like that, something that you can control the depth and that'll sink down to where you need it to go, that is a good follow-up bait. So now, if those two aren't working and as you're getting closer to that brush pal, one other thing that I would try at that point is maybe something like a jig, shake your head, something like that. So um, on a clear water lake, 
Um, you want to go with more natural colors. Sometimes I'll dye this with some chartreuse on it and um, put a little red. Just give it something that's a little more natural looking. Um, so then that would be my approach to how would you fish it? And of course, guys, once you get on top of it, what are you going to what are you going to pull out? The drop shot. So those are my killer combos that I would try out in a situation like this. What do you guys think? Let me see what you have to say down in the comments, guys. Let's get active. Make this a good um, a good video clip so that everybody can learn from it. And, guys, keep in mind, on Tuesdays, what I'm going to do now is every Tuesday we will do our live stream. So, um, like I said, guys, make sure you hit the like button on the way in. We're going to go ahead and head out, by, guys. But um, every Tuesday and Thursday we will do our electronics videos and also on Tuesdays 8 p.m. the live stream you want to get active in that we have a good time guys a lot of good questions are coming in um but that's it for now guys really appreciate you supporting the channel and I will see you on the next video